This January, I got to meet my best friend, Madison Camry, when she visited me. We've been friends since she was nine and I was 10, and she lives in North Carolina, but I think of her as my little sister. While we had our online connection, we didn't meet until this year. And by meet, I mean in person. We met at SeaTac Airport and it was amazing. There's a stigma against online relationships, platonic or romantic, but it's the age of technology. The means of meeting don't control the bond. I go to an online school called Columbia Virtual Academy. This has allowed me to meet a wide range of people all over, from the US to some people outside of the US as well. Virtual schooling was due to my being identified as a highly capable learner, or HCL. This meant that the traditional schooling system with its pre-structured set of curriculum wouldn't have been a good fit for me. Virtual schooling allowed me to pursue things that interest me and develop my capabilities. I've gotten to do things that I could never have imagined, but what really, sorry, uh, I'm nervous, can you tell? <laughs> <laughs> so, virtual schooling. I don't just sit behind a computer screen. Uh, I've gotten to do things like visit the Ape Caves and Mount St. Helens for my Pacific Northwest history as well as tour Olympia for US government. I quite often get asked how I am not a socially awkward human being. <laughs> this, my answer to that question is because every connection I make, I have to seek out. Sure, I don't have 30 friends born within 12 months of me who I see five days a week at school, but I have friends all over of all ages. I made these through being active online and in the community, which is how I became the youngest ever board member of Hearts and Hammers. <laughs> My first foray into the magical world of online communication came when I was nine years old and I took a pre-algebra class. This class connected me to an online forum with kids from my age at the time, nine to 17. We, of course, discussed our school, like things we we're having trouble on, things that interested us, but we also talked about things like books we were reading, like the Harry Potter series, and we would have deep philosophical discussions as to, is Snape a good person or not so much? <laughs> These conversations turned into more conversations which have developed into friendships I can't imagine my life without. When I was younger and my mom told me not to talk to strangers on the internet, I remember thinking I would never do that, that people who did that were crazy. Needless to say, my stance on the subject has changed. I've grown to realize that talking to people online is just as big of a question mark as talking to people in person. Every preschooler out there learns about stranger danger. But I've learned if you don't put yourself out there and interact, then you're going to miss out on a lot of amazing opportunities. Like I could have if I hadn't taken that leap of faith and then missed out on the best friend I could ever have imagined. Virtual schooling has given me a supportive learning community who makes me strive to be the best I can possibly be. It's given me opportunities like going and meeting the Microsoft Surface team, flying to Romania for underwater robotics, and learning about political activism from a friend across the country. Virtual schooling opens so many doors for me. Here I am sitting on a women in innovation panel with the woman who took Ford to China, the VP of the Pacific Science Center, and a woman who organizes innovation summits all over the Pacific Northwest. Virtual schooling prepared me for the real world because I'm living in it. Thank you. <laughs>